Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 show. My name is Nicole Simonin, and I have a very special guest today. Uh, this is one of my clients who I worked with in the VIP program, and she has graciously come on and is going to share her story with you. And I have to say, a lot of my clients um, are uncomfortable coming on podcasts. I have asked my clients to come on, and um, a lot of them are uncomfortable sharing their story, and I get that. Uh, depending on what kind of job you have or, you know, what your outlook is on podcasts. Some people just don't want their information out there. So I'm so grateful for Mickey for coming on to the podcast and sharing her journey. So if you are new to the Shape It Up show, we're talking all about weight loss for women over 40. And um, we're going to talk about Mickey's journey and how she started and, and uh, just dive right in. So Mickey, thank you so much for being on the show today. And You're welcome. let's just dive in. So tell me what was your life like before you heard about my program? What were you doing? Okay. So, you know, for those that, um, they don't know me, probably almost everybody that's watching doesn't know me. I am very short. I'm only four, nine and three quarters, you know, I'm just under four ten. And, um, with that being said, and I'm 46 years old and with that being said, you know, it is very hard to lose weight. You, when you gain weight, you see it right away, you know? And so for the, almost my entire adulthood, I've been considered overweight, um, because I'm eating the same as what maybe a six foot person is eating. I'm eating the same, I was eating the same amount as maybe a six foot person was eating, you know? And so when you gain weight, you see it right away and you can't, you can't hide it. And so, you know, prior to this journey, you know, I struggled with weight up and down yo-yoing. Um, but I pretty much was staying, uh, somewhere around like I've always averaged about 125. Now some of you out there might be like, oh wow, I wish I could I was 125. But 125 for somebody that's 100 or sorry, somebody that's 125 that's four foot ten is like maybe somebody that's six foot at 250 pounds or 200 or 300 pounds of meat maybe, you know, who knows? Right. You know, I'm not sure the math there, but <laughs> you know, it, it's a lot for somebody of my height. And that's what I've averaged about most of my life. And the, the highest I was, was 140. Mm -hmm. Um, and what, so how far back was that? That was about 10 or that was in 20, 2011, actually, because okay. I actually have pictures from 2011, um, where that was. Yeah. And I think that's significant for those who are listening, you know, like Mickey's saying is when you're shorter, five pounds, even just five pounds is, is huge looking on someone who's a smaller frame, as opposed to someone who is much taller. You guys, you taller ladies out there can uh, evenly distribute that weight a little bit differently, especially if it's just five pounds. But if you're talking, you know, significant, um, trying to think of what so you probably were if you said you were 140 you were probably 40 pounds over what over weight yeah 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 because you know ideally you know I feel my best at 110 or a little under mm -hmm. and at 140 wow well, like I'm not even sure how I could move at 140 you know um, and like I said, I kind of averaged 125. It just felt like that's where I was no matter what I was doing. So, so now let's go just prior to uh, working your program. I was 122 and this is COVID, you know, and, yeah. um, and it's like, well, how do I lose during this time? And um, I'm not comfortable going back to the gym, you know, with COVID. And um, I mean, I did manage like when we were in lockdown because I like to go out and eat. So that's a little bit of my background <laughs> too, is my husband and I go out to eat like three times a week. 
And I go to parties too, because I'm part of a theater company and we're always going to parties or I'm always going to friends' houses. And so going on any kind of crazy diet like never really works either because you're, you, you can't, you know, it's very hard to like pick and choose those specific foods, right? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, so then with, with COVID, when we had the lockdown, I actually lost weight of some pounds within that. I think I got down to 118 or so because I was no longer going out. Right. You know, we're kind of forced almost to because was, you couldn't go forced. out. Yeah. You know, I wasn't going out and everything. So I lost it. But as soon as the lockdown, you know, lifted in 2020, like summer of 2020, I went right back up to the 122 to 125 range. Yeah. And it was like instantly right back there. Yeah. And, and I think I don't have to cut you off, but I think that's significant for everybody listening, just not even because it's COVID, but this is the way diets are. You know, if you think about it, when you start a diet, and if you've been listening to me, you know, I don't agree with diets. I'm really out to squash the dieters mentality. Um, but because you were kind of forced into not having that food, you did lose weight, but then it's the same thing. When you pick a diet, you're forcing yourself to follow these rules and criteria. And then once you stop or something happens, or, you know, you, you quote unquote, get released of your prison, <laughs> then all of a sudden you want, you want to, you go back to your old habits. You go back to the way you were eating before. Um, and then, you know, I know you and I have talked a lot about like the whole, the aftermath of, of overeating and, and the shame and the guilt behind all that. And that's a lot of what we dive into, um, yeah. working together for sure. But yeah, I mean, COVID definitely, uh, I'm sure forced a lot of people to, you know, pay attention to what they're eating or like, it just got taken away. It's the same thing with diets. So that's why they don't last. <laughs> so I, right. it doesn't work. And you, you know, do they, do they work to lose weight? Sure. But you're, unless you're on it forever, right. unless that is your plan to be on that forever and you're happy with that, which I don't know how they're happy with that. Like I, anytime I try to diet in the past, I was not happy with it. Um, unless you're going to be on it forever, it's not going to keep you, it's not going to maintain, you're not going to be able to maintain that weight. Yeah. Yeah. You're so going to go right back up the same way I did with COVID and, you know, because I didn't learn how to eat back then. And I also didn't have the mindset back then. And I also wasn't working out back then, you know, <laughs> and but the thing is you don't need to really work out a whole lot either. It's just, even the littlest activity is better than nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one of the things we talked about it through the program. Um, and I think a lot of people are shocked when they work with me because I'm not asking you to do six hours at the gym or oh. crazy workouts. I mean, I think we had you at what, 30 minute workouts? Throughout yeah, the tops. Week? yeah, tops. Yeah, tops. Yeah. And yeah. How, what, four days? I don't remember. Three. Four or five? Three. Three days a it week. <laughs> like I walked every day. So, you know, those again that don't know me, I'm, I also hike mm -hmm. and walk a lot. So I was walking regardless, like, but I wasn't always doing, I wasn't really consistent with it before. But while I was on this program, I would just, walked, even though it wasn't part of my workout, you know, yeah, it wasn't part of my workout week that Nicole put together for me. It was, um, you know, I had three days of working out and that was it. And then it was up to me if I wanted to walk or not, I, I still would have lost it even if I wasn't walking, but yeah. Yeah. I think to finding things like, and every client that comes to me is different. So for you, it's definitely hiking. I have a client yeah. who enjoys skiing, that kind of thing, but it's finding movement that you love to do. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think workouts are important and we can tweak the mindset around lifting weights and all that. Um, because you want to have strength as you get older, but the, the key is really is finding joy in the process. And, yes. and I know that's been said out there with memes and quotes and stuff like that, but I think there's a misunderstanding in the sense of like, uh, uh, almost in the reverse of like, you have to force yourself to like <laughs> working out or running or something like that. And that's right. really not the case. And, and you don't like, you tweaked my workouts to what I wanted 
to work out. Like, so if I said, you know, I'm not happy with my abs, okay, here's some ab work, you know, stuff that's going to uh, target that. Or I, I don't like my bye bye arm, you know. So, you know, <laughs> bye bye arm. <laughs> we, you know, targeted workouts to that as well. You know? Yeah, and um, for those listening to, keep in mind you you can't like target specific areas. So when Mickey's talking about targeting, you have to lose body fat all over. Right. And I know we're talking a lot about weight, um, but the weight itself is not the important part. Mm-hmm. Like you're going to hear me. And even in my tagline, you know, lose weight for the last time, but it really is about body fat and losing it all over. And because Mm -hmm. Mickey was losing it all over, that's when I started adding in the more specifics of like the arms and the abs and things like that. Um, so I just wanted to clarify, cause you can't really target, you know, if you have right. extra weight in your stomach, you can't target that area. You have to lose it all over and then strengthen yeah. that area. Yeah. And that's when, and, the- and that's really what I, I meant was like strengthen those things yeah. uh, and, and tone it too. But I, yes, I was losing it every place. Um, but yeah, to tone it because like, even let's say with arms, like I just bought kayaks this year and I wanted to be able to use those arms to be kayaking. Um, yeah. and like with hiking my legs, like, um, they've gotten so much stronger. Um, and I can trek up the, the mountain and I use trekking poles too. So that's an all body workout too. Yeah. And prior to working with Nicole, like I get up that mountain and I'd be like, okay, I'm done. I like, you know, I'm losing my breath and my legs are hurting and everything's hurting. And um during our process I went hiking up the mountain and I got up there so fast I was like this is no problem yeah didn't you say you had to wait for your husband I did he was behind and you know what for Christmas we bought each other walkie-talkies just so I wouldn't have to keep stopping and like waiting for him because if I'm if I got that momentum to get up that that hill I want to keep going up yeah and not yeah. like stop and wait for him and make sure he's okay. So now we bought walkie talkies for, I got him walkie talkie <laughs> for Christmas between that and the kayaking too. Yeah. So walk. tell everyone you're kayaking when you first got it. Cause you had told me a story about when you were carrying it. Do you remember? No, I don't remember. I think you um, said you had just gotten the kayaks and you were nervous about picking it up and carrying oh, it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, um, I was, it's a 53 pound kayak and you know, it takes the both of us to get those kayaks up my truck. I have a, a Honda Ridgeline to pick up truck and to get them up on the racks. And I was a little worried of, you know, not being able to lift that and really get it up there. But because of my workouts and everything, I was able to do that. No problem. You know, I can't, it, it's still a lot of weight for myself to do. Yes. Um, that's half your body weight husband, practically. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you figure if I'm carrying half the weight, right. that's 25 pounds. And I was, I'm able to do that pretty easily. Yeah. Again, I, think, I don't think I would be able to do that prior to this. Yeah. Yeah. The thing I want to emphasize too, is working out like lifting weights and that kind of thing is the process to allow yourself to do all the things that you love, you know, having that healthy body, having the strength to do the things that you want to do, because that's really what it's about. It's not about going into the, the gym or, you know, I know you didn't go in the gym. Most of my clients work in their own home, um, Mm -hmm. do their workouts in their house. Um, but it's that strength that is built. So you can do the things that you love. And I, again, I think that's another thing that people miss. They think they have to gruel and lift weights and and do all this stuff. But the benefit that you're getting is your life is more fulfilling, you know, I mean, and it's, Mm -hmm. it's not such a struggle to do the things that you want to do. Yeah. 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 Um, so tell everyone, like, I know just briefly tell some like tidbits of things that you tried in the past before you came and worked with me in the past. So pretty much just before working with you. And I'd say for about a year, year and a half, maybe almost two years, I was trying intermittent fasting. 
And I find that helped to maintain that 102, 120, 122, 125 weight. Mm -hmm. I wasn't gaining, but I really wasn't losing more than a couple of pounds. And how'd you feel Um, eating that way? I didn't like it because I always felt, I felt hungry. And then I felt like I overate when I did finally eat in that window of time. Um, and it was, it was not fun just eating in a window of time and it wouldn't, it didn't make sense either because of the parties I go to eating out, these kind of things. Um, it, you know, I was able to maintain cause I wasn't eating, you know, all day, but yeah. I didn't, I didn't lose much either, you know? Um, tell, tell everybody about when you were working out your, how many years ago, I don't know how many years ago that was, you were working out in very intensely. <laughs> okay. So yeah. Um, one thing that worked to help me lose weight, but not maintain <laughs> lose weight was I was, this was about eight, eight and a half years ago in 2013 into 14. I was food logging. I was counting my calories um, where I would try to stay between a thousand and 1500 calories, but no less, no more. Like Mm -hmm. it was an intense food logging. I did eat whatever I wanted, you know, just like we do here, but I, I stayed within those calories and particularly really 1200, I was really trying to do. And once I hit that, I didn't eat any more, whether that was four o'clock in the afternoon, I hit it, or Mm -hmm. whenever I hit that mark, Mm -hmm. I wasn't eating anymore. Mm -hmm. Even if I I felt hungry, I wasn't eating anymore. Um, But then I had these intense workouts where I was working out at the gym five days a week, two day, two of those days, I might've walked two and a half miles to the gym did an hour of workout and walked two and a half miles back. I lost weight. Yeah. I was down to about 107 pounds and looking good, feeling good and everything. But the problem is, is it didn't last long. And the reason it didn't last was, well, well, there's a few reasons. So a year and a half later, or actually around that time I met my husband and we go out to eat. I didn't go out to (laughs) eat before, but we go out to eat and there's always appetizers. There's always things. And, um, so I would go out to eat and I would overeat when I'm out, Mm -hmm. you know, I wasn't counting my calories anymore when I was going out. Right. And then a year and a half later, I ended up with sciatica issues and I didn't know it was sciatica. It took several months to diagnose what it was. Mm -hmm. And I stopped moving completely. So five days at the gym became zero days Mm -hmm. and it became me not even moving at all, which, you know, knowing that today, even if I didn't know it was sciatica or know that I, the, the benefit of moving with it, you know, you can move with it, but let's say I didn't even know I, I could move with it. I could still do something with my arms. Right. You know, right. There's yeah. things I, c- I could be moving. I know we and... talked about that a couple of times. Yeah. 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 So if you have a body part that's injured, especially yeah. unless you're in a full body, I always tell people if you're in a full body cast, that's, that's your reason for not working out. But other than that, like if you have a, a bum ankle, a bum knee, you can still work your upper body. Yeah. You can still keep progressing. Yeah. 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 And then on top of that, let's say you are in a full body cast. So then now you fall back to the eating part and you need right. to learn how to eat. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, learn not to overeat only eat when you're hungry, you know? Yeah. Um, and stop before you're full and you need to really stop before, <laughs> before way before, before, you're full. before you're full. <laughs> you're going to be full. You know, if you wait 10 minutes, you're going to be full, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's what I was. And I was also missing the mindset piece which is your third and biggest piece Mm -hmm. of this thing that, you know, most diets don't have, you know, your intermittent fasting, your ketos, your South beach, your Atkins, all that doesn't have that mindset piece where, um, you say, if you are eating for, if you're not hungry, when you're, 
eating, it's emotional. Like when you're sitting in front of the TV and you're just keep eating chips or you go to a movie theater and you have to have that popcorn, you know? Yeah. And um, you're not hungry. That's and you're case. not hungry. Yeah. 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 Um, and, and just getting through that and some, and not just even that, but there's also a positive, a, a piece of that mindset of being positive, because I think that alone helped me lose some pounds, you know, yeah. being positive, getting rid of some negativity in your life. And that alone did wonders for me. Yeah. I know when you first started, um, and I know just for everybody listening, um, Mickey and I worked together for six months and when you first started, I know there was a lot of outside, um, I don't want to say negativity, but like outside, like the people that you were with and not that those people have disappeared, but the way you approach what they are saying to you is totally different than when you first started. And for those listening, I want to make sure that you're not like, this is not like happy Pollyanna. Let's put rainbows and sprinkles and sunshine on it. It's not that it's understanding why you're looking at things the way you're looking at them. And who doesn't want to be happy (laughs) most of the time? (laughs) Like there's something, if you want to be negative, there's something going on that you're, you're getting something out of being negative. And maybe that's victim mentality and that's a whole nother podcast, but um, (laughs) yeah, I mean, just being aware of of the circumstances in your life and you understanding that you get to decide how you want to relate to them and not necessarily react to them, but how do you want to um, show up as the person that you want to be in that relationship or in that um, situation. So uh, tell people, so right before you started working with me, so let's just kind of give them a little bit of a timeline. So you said you were 140, uh, what, 10 years ago, give or take? Yeah. And then you went and did all the craziness at the gym and you Mm -hmm. micromanaged your food and you got down to 107, right? Yep. Then where were you? Like you started gaining it back because you met your now husband. Um, When and what was your high point after that as far as weight wise? It was in the high 120s. Okay. I want to say 127 or eight was like my high point then in the last eight years. Okay. So So when, you you know- Yeah. So I wasn't as high as I had been before. Right. But yeah, I want to say 127. I may have been my highest. Yeah. You're still talking now 30 pounds probably over what's considered ideal for your height. Um, Okay. So when, what was it that you like made you want to work with me? Um. So I would see you post on your Facebook page, um, things that I, I, I knew was possible, but I needed, I needed that, um, you know, uh, trying to figure out the word I'm, I'm looking for, but I, I, you know, there was things that you would say, like, you can eat whatever you want. There's no restriction. There's, you know, you don't have to do crazy workouts. And these are all things I, in the back of my head, I believed in, Mm -hmm. but I never met anybody else that said those things. I never met a trainer or anybody, you know, that said those things. And, um, so I wanted to look into your program because I knew, okay, when I did those, when I did lose that weight. I was eating what I wanted, right? Um, But I was doing a crazy workout and I'm like, I didn't want to go back to the crazy workout because I didn't have time for it anymore. I really don't have time to work out five days a week and go to walk to the gym and and all that. And so a lot of the things that you were saying just made sense and things I believed that were in the back of my mind anyway. And, um, And so, yeah, like, that's why I wanted to work with you. I also didn't want somebody, I didn't want a trainer that was going to go to the gym with me and stand over me and say, do that one last push up. I want (laughs) one more, one more. Do it, do it now. You know? (laughs) Yeah. No, that's not the the kind of trainer (laughs) I I need, you know? 
And then on top of that, yes, I've been working out at home. Like, not that I don't want to go to the gym. I'm going to go to the gym eventually. You know, I have a gym at my clubhouse in, at my apartment and I'm eventually going to go there, use the treadmill in the winter, that kind of thing. But um, I really wanted to learn how to work out in my house and in this, really the space of just, just slightly bigger than a yoga, yoga mat. Yeah. is the space I've been working out in. And all I had to do was buy a few weights, <laughs> right. you know? Yeah. I yeah. had 10 pound weights already. I bought, uh, I bought a couple of eight pound weights and a couple of five pound weights. And I've been using those and a backpack, mm-hmm. uh, filling yeah. a backpack too, and doing yeah. lunges and things. Cause that's like, as we progressed, you know, right. But right. I wanted to learn how to do all that and get new variations that, you know, I didn't do before. Um, And that's why I wanted to work with you. Yeah. And uh, you are not alone. Most of the clients that I have, they don't necessarily want to go to the gym. You know, they Mm want to, because there is some freedom in the sense of like, you don't have to drive to the gym. You don't have to do the extra time to get there because honestly, sometimes that's the biggest like deterrent is going from house to gym (laughs) and not wanting to do that. But when it's there in your house and especially, you know, the workouts that I tend to give are compact in the sense of like, not just in time frame, but you're getting more bang for your buck in the sense of, you know, space wise, I always meet the client where they're at. So if we're working with body weight, you know, because Mm -hmm. you, you don't have weights or anything like that, that's where we're starting. Um, yeah. There was something else that you had said, but I can't remember <laughs> what it was. Um, so I think it was about like the, a lot of times, you know, I think when women hear me talk about, um, it can be simple, it can be easy. It can be, you don't have to micromanage your food. You don't have to do all these crazy workouts. I think they think I'm a little crazy in that sense. Um, because they don't believe it is possible. So Mm -hmm. for you to have that, um, in your head, as far as like, is a possibility, I think was a great first step for you. Um, and I know, I know what I was going to say about the workouts when, um, when my clients do the workouts, they're designed for them and then they do them at their own time. So I'm not like yeah. on video standing over you and watching you and telling you to do more or do whatever. Um, we do talk about motivating and motivation um, as needed per client. Uh, the other thing I love about that aspect is you get to do your workout whenever you want. I get a notification that says, yes, you did your workout and you can do comments and things like that. So there's that accountability, but um I love that aspect of being able to allow my clients to have the freedom to do their workout whenever. Cause I know there were a couple of times you did some workouts really late at night and there's no way yeah. there, there's <laughs> times it's like... past midnight and I'm doing my workout, you know, because that that's sometimes when and... I've gotten it in, you know? Yeah. And yeah, like you said, <clears throat> you know, there's accountability, there's still accountability. And that's what I want. I wanted, I wanted some sort of accountability without having a, that kind of schedule where I, it was like, oh, I got to go to the gym now because that's what I'm meeting my right. trainer now at this time when I, you know, oh, you know, sometimes during the day, it's, I might be working late, you know, and what would I do in that case? Cancel? Yeah. yeah. You know, can you meet me at midnight? <laughs> at yeah. Can you just meet me at midnight at the gym? You know, because sometimes my workouts are in the morning, sometimes at six, sometimes it all depends on what shift I'm working and what I'm doing. Uh, for example, even, uh, Christmas Eve, I think it was, Mm -hmm. um, my schedule was pretty packed from the time I woke up until really the time I got home, you know, around midnight or so. Um, I knew I was going to get a full 30 minute workout in, but what I did is I, I did do a little bit of cardio. I have a rebound or a trampoline. Mm-hmm. And while my husband was in the shower, the 15 minutes he was in the shower, I was jumping on my trampoline and said, <laughs> I'm going to get it in here while I'm waiting for him in the shower. Yeah. And then as soon as he was done, 
I'm at, you know, okay, it's my turn, you know? Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, so tell everyone, let's get into some stats here because um, I think most people want to know, you know, what, what the physical difference has been, not just, you know, mentally and, and what's going on in your life. So when you started with me, I think you said you were 122, right? Yeah. Um, and you lost 16 pounds right over the six months we work together which again if you're in that dieter's mentality and you're like oh well I need to lose 10 pounds in a week that is not realistic the difference between I feel and Mickey you can validate this if you like (laughs) is that you when you work with me the weight that you're losing it doesn't matter how fast or how slow because what you're learning to do is to maintain that weight once you've lost it. So yes, you're going through that process of losing the weight, but you're really, I'm educating you and teaching you and unlearning a lot of the things that you have learned as you go through that process and really stepping into that new version of you, that new person who is, you said you were at 105, uh, that version of you, currently has to be able to act and be, think and feel as a a 105 person. Mm -hmm. So it's not just, you know, so some people might look at 16 pounds and be like in six, in six months, but I got news for you. If you're constantly losing a lot of weight and then gaining it back, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's really about losing it and keeping it off. Um, So inches wise, you lost four inches off your chest, four inches off your waist, three inches off your hips and one inch off your thighs. So again, that's significant. She's a four foot, what, 10, you said? 10, not even. (laughs) Yeah. 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 So I don't know how many dress sizes. That's probably two or three. Speaking (laughs) of dress. So within that time, I had a wedding to go to and I found a dress, you know, online and I bought it in a, it's either a medium or a small. And, you know, it wasn't the, the smallest size, whatever it was, it wasn't the smallest size. And I bought the dress and I said, and I put it on and I, I was still swimming in it. And, yeah. you know, and this was even smaller than what I would have purchased prior to working mm. with you. Mm-hmm. And because I would have been a solid medium back then and I think it was a small that I bought and because of the dimensions and everything and I ended up putting on I'm like this is still big on me I sent it back and got the extra small and you know that's where it counts is those those dress sizes and those measurements because four inches off your chest is a lot yeah somebody my height Yeah. And that's going back to like we were talking about earlier. It's not always about the pounds. Mm -hmm. I have a client right now who's, who's not really losing a lot of weight, but her inches are just going down significantly. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, putting all the stock in that little plastic metal scale that we step on is ridiculous. (laughs) It's not the end all be all for it. Um, Okay. So tell everyone kind of like what you got out of, of the program that we did together. And then how is life differently for you now? Okay. Um, what I got out, you know, without giving away too many of your secrets. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so with your, um, program, it's more than just working out and eating right. Yes, I got those things out of it. So with working out, uh, working out is really only a third of the whole plan. Um, so one third is working out. It was personalized workouts, you know, and we've tweaked them as we went along and added weight as we needed to. And like we, I mentioned before, it, I work out in the space no bigger than a yoga mat. You know, I sometimes work out in front of the TV while I'm watching one of my shows because that if that's when I can get it in, it's like, all right, well, I'm going to work out, watch my show while I'm doing my workout. You know, I'm not stuck to whatever's on the TVs at the gym. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, you know, because, you know, I'm a hiker and, you know, 
we added some workouts for that too, to strengthen my legs and to strengthen my ankles too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's so where it's that personalized. Physical therapy, my physical yeah. therapy degree comes in for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Personalize it to that. But also, so during the six months, I also had sciatica issue again. Um, and we ended up, you know, because of your physical therapy background, we ended up like working through that, you know, even making the needed adjustments of my workout, you know, if something, if I was doing an exercise that, you know, didn't feel great on my back, we added something different, you know? Yeah. And And then I continued with my physical therapy that I've that I did. So I did my physical therapy five or six years ago, I think it was about six. Mm -hmm. And I still had the papers for it and we pulled them out, Mm -hmm. (laughs) dusted them off. And I was doing that. And I ended up, you know, for my sciatic, I only ended up being maybe in some kind of pain within like, for like two months of that versus when I first had my sciatic issues in 2015, 16, it lasted like nine months. Yeah. And you stopped. You didn't stop this time. <laughs> I did not stop this time. Yeah, yeah. There was a difference before I stopped because I didn't know what to do. I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know that when you have sciatica, moving's probably better for you. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and as a side note, everybody is different. So <laughs> everybody's just, different. Exactly. Yeah. Or better for me. You know? Right. Right. <laughs> um, but even then I could have done something back then or tweaked an exercise. Like we tweaked a few things. If it, if it hurt, it's like, all right, well, let's do, instead of sit ups, let's do uh pipe the planks or something like that. And we, right. we switched a few things up. So it wasn't hurting, but I was doing my physical therapy. So that's the workout part of it. Then a third of it is the eating, but it's not what to eat because you can, there are no restrictions. And that's what I loved about this. Cause I, I knew when I lost the weight before I was eating whatever I wanted, but in a portion control, but the difference between that and this was I was measuring things out. I was doing things prior yeah. to that. I was measuring and, um, you know, prepping and out my portion yeah. and prepping. Mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas now I don't, I don't do that. And you were food logging too. I was food logging as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And just think of all the time now that you have (laughs) because you're not doing all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So instead I learned how to eat. Um, One of my biggest problems was eating fast. Like I, I was like shoveling it in and uh, you would think I'd be barely tasting it, but yeah, I'm shoveling it in and not realizing that it takes a while for your stomach to tell your head that you're full. And I would overeat all the time. And now if I slow down, I feel full quicker and, oh, okay, I'm not going to eat everything on my plate then, you know, I'm going to wrap it up. And, you know, speaking of leftovers and wrapping up, I'll go out to eat. I'll go out to eat now. And a lot of times I would wrap things up, but it would be just one extra meal. Mm-hmm. Now it's like four extra meals, right? <laughs> you know, I'd go to that steakhouse because I, I love steak. And instead of that steak being two meals, it's now four, you know, yeah. because I'm listening to my body now. Right. So, right. and then the other third of this entire process is the mindset piece, which to me is one of the most important pieces. And especially that you don't get this everywhere is um, your thoughts and feelings behind food and why you eat. So when people go on these, these diets, they're not getting that, you know? So when they're off of that diet, they're going right back to the way that they ate before. And they're not understanding why they're eating, you know, the way that they're eating. And they're going back to those same habits and stuff. And maybe, you know, and the thing is, we talked about this earlier about maybe getting rid of some negativity and being more positive and more grateful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think too, a lot of people think that in order to change the outside, 
you most people gravitate towards, oh, I have to find a diet. I have to do all these like external things. But I'm yeah. telling you the change happens when you work on the inside first mm -hmm. and then the outside will change. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so then your second question is how, uh, how is that different now? Or yeah. how is How's life different? That question, but how is it different <laughs> now? Um, I'm basically, I'm no longer stressed at being at parties, seeing all the food on the table. In fact, you're um, on top of, what I got out of our program, our one-on-one -on -one program together is you have the Crush Your Cravings mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, workshops and uh, some of your other podcasts and workshops and things. Um, little, that alone would benefit people. You yeah. Know? You're talking Just, to master your mind, change your body. Yeah. 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 Um, we're going to a party and you don't have to eat everything on the table, but you can. Right. <laughs> Yeah. You know, and once you give yourself that permission that you can, you kind of don't want it, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, parties and even holidays. So this, you know, we stopped our six months just prior to Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. So I've had two holidays in there. Yeah. On your uh, own. <laughs> and it's not holiday month, right? Right. Because that's what it tends to end up being. A holiday. You know, um, I, I still continued to lose weight. So yeah. before the holiday month, <laughs> I was 107 pounds and I saw the scale Christmas Eve at 105.8. You know, yeah. who does that during the holiday? You don't <laughs> think you can do that during holidays, but you can, you know? Yeah. And I didn't think I could do that during the holidays. And I, I was like, I'd be happy if I just gained one or two pounds during the holidays. Well, I maintained and actually really dropped some. Yeah. So yeah. you can do that. You can. You know? And it wasn't like restrictive or white knuckling it or refusing no. the cookies nope. that you want. <laughs> no, yeah. I ate all yeah. the things as much, you know, I just didn't, I ate all the things that I wanted to eat, but didn't eat my full plate maybe, or I definitely didn't go back for seconds. You know, I listened to my stomach and said, you know, okay, do I really need that stuffing? Maybe I'll get it wrapped up and have it the next day, you know? Right, right. And that's the building of the mindset piece in it, because a lot of people, when they first start, they tell themselves they, they can eat everything, but they don't believe it, <laughs> you know, yeah. and it kind of backfires. Um, and I just want to touch on one of the, the things that I remember us talking about in our uh, client sessions is that when you went to parties and you would hear friends talking about all the foods that they couldn't have because they were on some crazy diet, whether it's keto, um, but share your perspective of hearing them briefly. And then we're going to wrap up. Yeah. So when you hear that, like all you hear is I can't eat this. I can't eat that. Nope. I can't eat that. And What I get out of that is, you know, when somebody's on a diet, when you go to these parties or multiple people on it, on these crazy diets, like then everybody's on a diet, you're on a diet then too, because, um, if you're bringing a dish to one of these things, you're, you're trying to keep them in mind when you're bringing this dish, um, and, oh, they're not going to be able to eat this or that. And that makes you on that diet. Yeah. You're saying or, when you're the host. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or and, yes. Yeah. When you're the host, even and it's like, you got to keep, you know, all these different diets in mind. Like, right. right. I, this person's I, a vegetarian. This person's keto. This person's paleo. Yeah. This person only eats carbohydrates. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I yeah. And then it's like, well, then you have to be on the diet. That's what you're making. <laughs> right. But if you are going to these parties and that's what you're, you're hearing and it's like, well, that, that's kind of miserable. Yeah. <laughs> that you, you know? Um, and I, I know I had another thought on that too. And I'm, I'm blanking at the moment. Um, I just remember when we were talking about it, you, when it's, it's almost, 
and I don't mean this in a negative way, um, but, and I, I feel the same way too when I'm out at parties as well, but like, there's almost like, because you've done the mindset piece, it's almost like you have the secret. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, and everyone else is, is running around like chickens with their heads cut off. I know that's probably yeah. a horrible image, but like they're running around like, oh my gosh, I can't eat carbs. No, oh, carbs are in today. Carbs are out today. I have to only eat broccoli, you know, or I only have to eat bare chicken, whatever it is that the diet of the day is. Um, you just kind of look back at them and you're like, really, it could be so much simpler. It could be so much easier. And there's almost like, and you, and a lot of times you can't, I know from my perspective, you can't say something to people because then they, they just are like, oh no, no, no. I look at a, a roll and I gain 10 pounds. Yeah. And, like I I've heard that within this journey of people saying, no, if I have that one thing, it's going to send me spiraling down. Yeah. And it's just not and true. I'm like, no, it's not true. Yeah. Yeah. That one thing is not going to do that to you. Right. Right. It's up here. Yes. Yeah. That's what's yeah. going to do that to you. Yeah. It's building. And that's a lot of, you know, um, yes, we do coaching calls in the VIP <clears throat> program and even in the group program, but you know, as a client, you get access to master your mind, change your body, which is really what Mickey was saying is the foundational points, you know, just having that vault of information and even not interacting with me, you would get so much out of that. Um, you know, and then you layer on top of the coaching calls and the workouts. I mean, it's just, that's, it, there's it, so much material packed in the six months that it is well worth it. Um, and I, I do want to like brush on that too, because I've had people, several people say, oh, how are you doing it? Oh, how much does she cost and whatever? And then they, they cringe, right? Right. Because they're not willing to pay a dime really, but it's like, but this is your health and this is forever. If you yeah. had a broken leg, would you get it fixed? Yeah. I had LASIK surgery. That's to last me the rest of my life. I paid, you know. I don't know if I ran maybe for that. And it's like, I didn't hesitate. Right. Yeah. And, or, um, what was the other thing? Oh, my teeth, right. Mm -hmm. One that's helped to get your teeth done, but I spent about eight to 10 grand on my teeth. And once I did that, I was able to smile, you know, without feeling self-conscious. So yeah. why wouldn't you do that with, why would you not hire a trainer like you that has all this information that could take you to the rest of your life. When you add it up for the rest of your life, you're looking at pennies a day. Yeah. Yeah. It's really what you're looking at. I find it. You know, and then you're good. Some people have like cosmetic surgeries done and all these tattoos and whatever to, you know, make themselves look better on the outside, but aren't willing to put that money out for a trainer that's going to help them get through the rest of their life because you never know what you're going to encounter in life you know if you're going to be in the hospital or a nursing home or whatever and the diets only teach you what to eat but in those situations you might not get to pick that yeah but with your program i know how to eat and i can still do some workout or something like, and then with the mindset, like that's still going to take, that's going to take me forever until I die. And right. that's what people need to look at it as that it's not X amount for six months. It's X amount for the rest of your life. Yeah. And yes, I cringed a little bit when I first, you know, I was like, oh, I don't know, uh, but I would do it all over again. I would do it all over again because what you have to teach is not out there, you know, and I've actually heard people, you know, had said a few people had said, oh, well, I have the tools. I just, I, I just need to dig in and, and do it. I know what they are, but if you knew you wouldn't be asking, cause you'd already be there. Right. You know, right. you wouldn't be having any kind of weight issue or a health issue like that, or, any, you know, cause when I speak health issue, I'm talking about like, let's say cholesterol. Cause my, I have high cholesterol as mm -hmm. well and high triglycerides. And I did just have my annual blood test, blood work done. And my numbers are lower. Yay. They're still, <laughs> elevated. and my doctor was very happy with me. 
um, on that and just said, we will just uh, reevaluate come next year. Just keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing those, you know, exercises, that workout, whatever you've been doing the last six months, keep doing that and we'll see what your numbers are again. But they are all down from last year. That's awesome. And that's the important thing. Right. Um, yeah. So it is your health you're talking about. Um, yeah. And if you plan on living, like, again, we're, you know, my, most of my women that I work with are over 40. So if you plan on living for the next 50 years, the time that you spend with me, you're, you're getting, <laughs> you're getting a degree in how to have the body that you want to live in and have yeah. the mindset that you want to live in. And, you know, if you want to live 50 years where you're on a diet, off a diet, gaining weight, losing weight, constantly frustrated, constantly upset, or, or, or feeling good when you step on the scale and you see, you know, there's all these like yo-yo emotions. Yep. That's fine. You can absolutely live your life the way you want to. But if you want to feel a freedom around food, a feeling of freedom around your body of like loving you, loving the body that you're living in and doing the things that you want to do, we need to talk, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. Well, I think that is a great place to wrap up. Um, again, I really appreciate you coming on. I know we talked for about an probably an hour. So this is a long podcast, but I really think it's valuable for people to listen. And, you know, you are just one story. Everyone has their own story, their own journey, their own version of how they're going to get to the body that they want. Um, but if you are out there and you're struggling and you want to work with me and you want my help, go to shapeitupfitness.com um, slash call just request a discovery call and we'll just sit on the call and talk and I'll figure out what's going on with you and where you want to go. And if we want to move forward, we can do so at that call. Again, it's shapeitupfitness.com slash call. Um, any parting words, Mickey, that you want to leave with the audience? Um, just to say, yeah, everybody is different. And although I only needed to lose you know, 16 pounds. My original goal was only 110. It was okay, 12, right. I think it's 12 <laughs> pounds. You know, that was my original goal. And I went beyond that. And I, I don't want anybody out there that, that needs to lose a hundred pounds and say, well, that worked for you. Cause it's only 12, 16 pounds or whatever, but what about a hundred pounds? No, this will, th this can work for you. Yeah. You know, it can work for you then all, and also just as we're saying, you know, everybody's different. I also have a client who lost 90 pounds working together. Awesome. So, fantastic. you know, at 40 pounds, 20 pounds, it, it just varies on yeah. where you're starting from and that's okay. You know, yeah. um, everybody has their own journey and where yep. they want to feel good. Cool. Yep. All right. Well, thank you again so much for being on again. If anybody wants to find out how they can work with me right now, I have VIP, uh, one-on-one, um, openings. And I also have a group that I just started, which is also just as incredible. Um, so you can go to shapeitupfitness.com slash call. All right, everybody have a beautiful day and I will talk to you soon.